The most requested feature since the release of version 1.1 was the $500 bill of material. Over 2000 users asked for it here on YouTube, on TikTok and on Discord. Today I'm finally able to share with you the V100 High Speed Edition. What's the difference between this one and the standard edition? How fast is it? And is the High Speed Edition the new standard? This and more we will find out in this video. Hey and welcome back to my channel. I'm Matt the Printing Nerd and today I will give you a brief overview of the parts that I have changed for the new V100 High Speed Edition. So let's get started. The core of the High Speed Edition is the new Linear Motion Kit. Those who have followed me and the project since day one knew that I have done a lot of research into the motion system. What is the best linear bearing? Polymer based ones or steel ball bearings, PTFE based or maybe graphite or even Zinter bronze? I have tested them all. And not only that, I sourced over 20 different brands and paired them with different rods steel based ones, titanium, carbon fiber, and even aluminium. I tried different diameters and spent over 8000 euros on parts and countless hours of testing over a period of 6 months. It would be beyond the scope of this video to talk about every insight I got, so I will briefly summarize what my insights are and how they influence the Linear Motion Kit. The rods are made out of bearing steel. It's the best material for this job. Low roughness to reduce the wear of the linear bearing, high hardness to reduce the wear of the rod itself, it's flexible enough to be manufactured at the tightest tolerances and we choose a manufacturing process that ensures the best possible straightness. The bearings are designed to be the best-in-class solution for any rod-based printer. We used chrome steel and combined it with a hard chrome platening process. This process greatly improves the corrosion and friction resistance of the bearing. While ensuring high-speed sliding, it extends the service life of the bearing by about 250%. Also, the dynamic and static loads are the highest I've measured so far on a linear motion system. When it comes to quality control, we know that even the slightest amount of play will significantly reduce the possible acceleration the gantry could handle. Therefore, we designed a test scenario to ensure that the rod you receive and the linear bearing we pair with them are a perfect match. And I could go on for hours, I could talk about the packaging we have chosen, the service and support channels we've defined, but the question you are most interested in is how much faster is it? Well, before I could answer this question, we have to talk about the motors. Those who have seen my previous videos on how to choose the best motor for the 100 will know that I am a fan of the Vantai motors. They are strong, reasonably priced, but hard to get. I got mine from a local German store that sells them in limited quantities, so they are usually out of stock. It might be similar for you in your country, so therefore I've added the Speedies from LDO as an alternative. Usually they are a bit more expensive and therefore they are not my first choice. The final parts that complete the gantry of the printer are my lightweight gantry parts. I designed them to be as light as possible while retaining all the structural properties of the original ones. They have also a more organic shape which makes them easier to print in preformed PLA which might be a thing for the future. The lightweight gantry printed in regular PLA is about 42 grams lighter than the standard one and is an exclusive goodie for my Patreon backers. So it's time to run some tests. While the standard edition was able to reach 1000 mm per second speed with an acceleration of 25000 mm per second squared, the high speed edition is able to run the gantry at 2000 mm per second speed with an acceleration of 55000 mm per second squared. That's a huge improvement. We also tested the claim that gives our printer its name. 
while the standard edition was able to reach the name giving acceleration of 100,000 mm per second squared at a speed of 400 mm per second, the high speed edition was able to maintain that acceleration up to a speed of 650 mm per second. That's an increase of over 50% using the same AB motors current. Not bad at all. Now let's talk about the melting capabilities. We took the Rapido from the standard edition and decided that it would form the basis of our toolhead for the high speed edition. The maximum flow of 57 cubic millimeters that we have achieved is about 30% more that we get when using the standard CHC Pro hot end. We also moved the Triangular Labs 5015 fans to the high speed edition as they are quite powerful but also quite expensive. Compared to GDS time fans, we were able to measure 15% more airflow. We also decided to use a Capricorn style Bowden tube. With a 1.9 mm wide Bowden tube, I was able to reduce my pressure advance value from 0.52 to 0.38. That gives me about 30% more headroom before the Bowden extruder becomes a bottleneck. It allowed me to increase the maximum speed for my quality profile from 260 mm per second to 320 mm per second. Besides all the changes on the tool head or the gantry, I've added two more parts to complete the build. An acceleration sensor which allows you to measure the vibration profile of your printer. This is more accurate than the manual method of calibrating input shaper. With proper calibration of input shaper, you will be able to maintain similar level of quality at higher accelerations. The second part is a steel PEI flex plate. The soft shell plate provided with the print pad is fine for tuning and calibration, but it might give you a hard time getting the first layer consistent since it's a bit mushy. A steel plate helps you to get more consistent first layers and therefore it's a nice addition even if it doesn't improve the printing performance directly. By the time I created the bill of material, the final price of all the parts was about 470 US dollars. That leaves us with a bit more money, so I like to give you some ideas where I would spend my money on. The easiest but also most expensive way to save another 17 grams on the gantry is to change all the screws to titanium screws. There's no rational when it comes to price to performance ratio. It's just stupid in so many ways, but it saves 17 grams in total, so yeah. Another possible way to save weight on the gantry would be to use lightweight PLA. I plan to experiment a bit with foaming and pre-foamed PLA in the future. Printing the gantry out of foam PLA would save another 70 to 90 grams depending on how many parts you were able to replace with this lightweight option. Even if its structural abilities would be not enough for the gantry or the rod carriage, at least the toolhead could be printed out of foam PLA, which would save about 20 to 30 grams. I don't know if it will make the cut. But what I know for sure is that it's an interesting area to do more research on and hopefully it will help us to save a bit more weight on the moving parts. Another possibility spending your money on is by choosing a genuine Bontex CHT nozzle. The original Bontex CHT has about 3-5% higher maximum flow rates. And since the nozzle is nickel coated, the filament tends to stick less on the nozzle which also improves printing quality. You could also spend your money on a different power supply. I know, this is a bit controversial, but I read in different sources um, that there are many people who replace the power supply because they think that the quality of most Chinese power supplies is so bad that there are security risks. I'm not one of them, but to be honest, I've changed the fans of all my 4 the 100 builds um, since they were pretty loud and the tone was really annoying. In total, I spent more money on upgrading bad power supplies than I would have spent on when buying proper ones in first place. So I've added a Meanwell power supply as it has good reputation in the community. Now there is still a last question that has to be answered. Which edition should you choose when building a V100? Well, I think that it's not really a question you should ask yourself. If it's your first DIY 3D printer building or if you are used to normal bed slinger speeds, go with the standard edition. 
It gives you the same building experience and trust me, it's fast enough to put that smile on your face while watching it printing. I've created a curated list of the 100 builds by the community. Most of them are based on the standard edition and more than 50% of those printers were able to print a speedboat in about 6 minutes. The high speed edition is mostly for two groups of people. The ones that already built a D100 and want to extend their tinkering journey by adding new parts that open new problems that they could solve or maybe they reached a limit in their tuning process and an upgrade might help them to come over it. The other ones are those who are used to speed. And let's face it, emotionally you already convinced yourself to go the high speed route. And now you're watching this video to find rational arguments that this is the way you want to go. And yeah, I guess I'm part of that group. At least I was in the past for all the printers I've built before. So yeah, here you have it, the D100 High Speed Edition. A product that I love from the bottom of my heart and still would not recommend to 95% of you out there. With that said, thanks for watching. If you like my content, give a bit love back by writing a kind comment or subscribing to my channel. It helps me to be visible on the YouTube algorithm and therefore reach more and more people. Have a good day and now get out of here.